Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today is Wednesday, November 11th. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. My guest artist is Pat Butinsky and I can't wait for you guys to meet her. She's an incredible artist. She is an inspiration to me and to many others. She has been an artist for a very long time and an art teacher. And she's gonna join us hopefully any minute now. Um, Pat is joining us from New Jersey from her home studio and um, it has been truly a joy to get to know Pat and uh, form a friendship with her and um, Pat if you're out there please join us um, and <laughs> Leah says my my mentor my Hopa my inspiration I don't know what Hopa is but um, I'm sure it's an inside joke between you guys. And um, thank you for my friend Monica from Mexico who just joined. I'm super excited to have you here. Um, everyone who's joining, thank you so much. Just be patient with me and Pat will join us any minute, hopefully. Um, so I can tell you that it's been quite a passion um, to come to this point right now. and in my career to say that I've had tap into your creativity for eight months and counting. Um, hey Robin, how are you? Rachel, thank you all for being here. I'm just waiting for Pat to join us, but I was just saying that it's been a joy and uh, you are the guys that keep me going. Thank you for your incredible messages. I'm so happy that we are um, inspiring you at home and um, just being here with me and joining me and supporting this incredible effort to help everyone in need. And um, so to here is Pat, I'm gonna bring her in. Um, we're just waiting for Pat to join us. My mom just joined me, hi mom. <laughs> and here's Pat. Hi, oh. Pat. Hi, I have my camera positioned wrong. I cut my whole head off. That's, <laughs> That's all right. Okay. <laughs> How Take are my you? head off. Yes. Well, hey. it's okay. I have it right on top of you. So we kind of, you know, we kind of look funny. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> and I'm on a stool and I can't get any lower in here because I'm at a high table. Oh so. my God, lots of friends are joining. Linda, Gretchen, thank you all for being here. Um, yeah. Pat, um, thank you so much. I'm so happy it finally happened for us. I know last yeah. time we had um, sort of like a difficulty and then the next time you were going out of town. So I'm just really, really excited that you're here today with, with me and welcome into Tap Into Your Creativity. And thank you for believing in my in, in this journey and being part of my army of artists. I can't thank you enough. Oh, you're quite welcome. You know, I mean, I believe in, you know, this army of artists. I think that this is a great community and, um, and I, I like to call it a we community. And um, whenever we come together collectively, you know, we're better and we're more supportive of each other. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm all in. Well, I, I, like you said, it's a we community and, and I wouldn't be here without a we. So very exactly. well said. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I rely very much so on my um, army of artists. Um, you know, right now we're over $16,400 for Feeding America, which, Great. you know, it's, it's truly, if you put it into meals, it's over, I think, 70,000 meals that we have provided so it is really, truly something um, that I take dearly and, and uh, I'm very passionate about helping others and, and uh, I couldn't do it without you. So anyways, um, thank you for being here. Please tell us your name, who you are and where you work. Well, I'm Pat Butinsky, B-U-T-Y-N-S-K-I. And that's my husband's name, not mine. So, but... <laughs> I inherited. I'm not Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mutt. So I'm everything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You can get offended, all right? <laughs> Too 
too much damn offense around here. Uh, anyway, anyhow, um, Pat Patinsky, I'm from New Jersey, and um, I've been an Instagram, pretty much an Instagram artist since uh, 2015, I believe. Yeah, about maybe March, April 2015. I think my account says I joined in 2013 because my kid made me get on here when I just was taking pictures and stuff. And I, I posted about three things and I said, this is dumb. What, 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 what am I doing here? Nobody likes me and what, I don't understand it. <laughs> so, so I canned it, but it still had me in the system, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you've done really well for being on Instagram for only five years. But before we get to that point, go take us back to your childhood. Tell us, were you always um, intrigued by the arts? Were you always um, creative and inspired by the art world? Well, yeah. I mean, I my mom was an artist, musician. My father was a musician. Um, I, I grew up in a, you know, very creative family. Uh, not everybody, you know, did that full time because they were working hard after World War II to support the family. But it was just always a part of life. You know, it wasn't, it was never squelched in my life. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, I wasn't really allowed to do that. I was pushed in this direction. I was pushed in that direction. That wasn't the case with me. The only thing that I was that I was discouraged from doing is that I really wanted to be an actress. And ah. my mother was like, no, 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 Judy Garland, Judy Garland, you know, it's a terrible life. You don't want to be an actress. And I was like, oh. So, I want to be Judy Garland. You should have said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, that didn't turn out too well, but that wasn't a good example. But that's the only thing that she discouraged. However, I uh, I did do a lot of um, regional theater and studied dance and um, yeah, you know, all of that voice. Uh, I just always had an interest in in all the arts. You know, it just all crossed over. And it, then you know. and then you went to college and you got an art degree or a designer, a graphic designer. Yeah, I went to school uh, for marketing, art, and design, and um, it, yeah, because I didn't have any money at the time. I, I mean, I just graduated high school. I moved out before I graduated high school, and uh, I uh, had an aunt who saw um, a, a watercolor painting, like one of, you know, maybe three that I had done, and um she loaned me the money to go to school. And back then it was $3,000 was my big investment. Yeah. And uh, so I went to Middlesex County College and anything that had art in it, I, I took that. So it was marketing, art and design. So um, I, when I got in there, I just felt like home. I just loved being there. I loved commercial art. I loved graphic design. I loved you know, our photography curriculum, you know, it, to me, it was just all good. So I graduated with that. And so I was, was able to, to land jobs right away. And uh, then I went on to School of Visual Arts. And uh, back then, they, they were separate and Pratt and Parsons. Uh, but it turned out that they ended up using me to help them teach the class. <laughs> I was like, really? What kind of class was that? Well, they were, I, I studied, one was with Milton Glaser. He's the only one that didn't need my help. But um, uh, one was illustration. Some other ones were ones that were taught by big name um, advertising agencies. And they wanted to learn how to do comps back there and type design and what have you. But I had been working, you know, in the industry and going to school at night. So it just turned out that I, I really didn't need the degree and uh, it didn't end up holding me back. So I really didn't go on to get my BA or anything because back then it was all about your portfolio. So, you know, when you went to get a job, your portfolio did the talking. And the one thing that uh, was really interesting, especially early on, um, that landed me jobs is that um, 
I, I just had student work at first, but I included with my student work, we would have to do thumbnail sketches. So we would have to do, you know, ideas, show our ideas. But most people didn't include those, but, but I would just do pads and pads of ideas. And so I put them in with mine and a guy from Bell Labs came and he went through my portfolio and he said, you know what, out of everything in here, this is the stuff that's going to get you a job. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, because people are want to want to know how you think. And it's all about coming up with the big idea. And so you could have a beautiful. Having just like you said, a solid portfolio and knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Because at that time, and even now, I think that, you know, a solid portfolio speaks volumes. Right. Yeah. It's like, show me, show me the money. It's one of the few jobs, you know, even like acting, you have to audition. Right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, exactly. You know, like, show me the money. Exactly. I want to see the work, you know, yeah. and if yeah. you don't have it, your portfolio in order, you know, uh, you can have a, you know, a bazillion letters after your name and degrees, but it's all theory. Right. Exactly. So, so you knew right away when you're in Parsons and you're a student slash now, I would say an AT, a, teacher, a TA, a teacher's assistant, I guess. Yeah, well, I didn't make any money. They didn't even pay me to do it. I was paying to go to those classes. I would <laughs> no. drive in after work and they would like, could you go over there and help them with their comps? And I was I'm, like, okay, <laughs> you know, or whatever. But you know, maybe and, that's where you got your skills for for how you are today and your students that follow you and, and how, you know, I think it was very natural to you. It came just a very natural way of interacting with people. I think, I think you're a people lover like me. Um, you thrive with a group of artists or a group of creatives and you feed from them. Am I correct? Well, yeah, it's funny to hear you say that. I never much thought about it. But yes, I think it kind of was a comedy of errors because, um, but it was building into something. I think that, uh, I, first of all, I never wanted to be a teacher, but I was always looking for one. And I could never find the teacher. And I would go to study and little by little, I, I would always end up being in a position where, and I, I didn't think I knew what I was talking about, where uh, I was assisting. And um, so, you know, I kind of was always a little bit disappointed with that because I, oftentimes I would take a job even in advertising because I wanted to be mentored by somebody that I, I really respected, but I just never found the one. So I, Maybe, and this is kind of an epiphany, that I, I, I'm trying to be the teacher that I could never find. I love that. I actually do love that. I think it is an epiphany for you because I think that what I've seen from you and um, how you influence and um, really inspire people at home is because if you had the capacity to be with them in person, it feels like you would hug each one of them. That's oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a hugger. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. You have that. You 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 and I have that same. Um, I don't COVID know doesn't call, matter. You call this? I don't know how you call this, but it's like wanting to, uh, you know, be a part of a community, be a part of something else, um, reaching out, giving people things that maybe we couldn't find, but now we're finding, and then we're giving, and so. I think you're you're like that. I don't know. I just uh, you know, at sixty five years old, it's like I, young, I really young. have permission. Sixty five years sort of, young. I can't really be anybody but me, and it's kind of a very freeing place to be. Yeah. Because you can only imitate for so long. Even when I worked in the corporate world, you know, I mean, I think this pours into our art into finding our own voice. But, you know, you, you know, I had to dress a certain way then. I had to wear, you know, closed-toed shoes. I had to wear suits. Um, and there was a certain vernacular that you spoke in. And, you know, uh, yeah, you were expected to behave a certain way. And it, it, it wasn't necessarily me, but 
I considered it part of my job. So that's what I did. Um, but then when I ended up going out on my own for a multitude of reasons, uh, I, I kind of started to find my own voice and realize, especially in advertising, that there are actually people willing to pay for it. So and that's where you so, really went in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was very, very blessed. I, I never had to chase clients. I never had to chase money. I never had to beg for work. I really, honestly, I just feel like, um, you know, this kind of loving kindness or favor has hovered over my life through everything, through all the ups and downs. And, you know, I mean, I'm a Jesus girl. So I would say, it's it's the hand of God. But, I, you know, I, I will say thank you and not rush things off. Because of course, a lot of people will say, Oh, you're so talented, you know, but and that that's a nice thing to say. But the the missing link there is that it takes a lot of hard work to build your craft. It that you know, I mean, somebody will say, oh, that looks so easy. You just make that look so easy. Let me tell you something. It's like <laughs> I'll say, you know, it could take, I could do something in five minutes, uh, an award-winning piece, maybe, maybe, in five minutes. And I always say five minutes, that took me five minutes and 40 years. Exactly, exactly. And like we said, you do a hundred and maybe one of the 100s will be a winner, you know, and it's just showing up and, and doing it and trial and error and, you know, and doing the work. It doesn't come easy. It just, you just have to show up and, and repeat and learn and put yourself out there and try all this stuff to, um, you know, to keep growing in your craft. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a uh, it's, it's a matter, uh, and we kind of discussed this a little bit on the phone. It's a matter of, uh, for me personally, and and I think this is the same thing for a lot of artists, but maybe it's hard to put into words. Um, but I've had a lot of time to think about things, and also in teaching, you know, you kind of have to verbalize things. So, so I spend a long time on my long drives to and from my classes. But you know, the one thing that always drove me even from a little kid, and I never really want to lose that, is um, that I, I just find it all fascinating. Right. And um, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated enough to go after it. I'm fascinated enough to stick with it. I'm fascin fascinated enough to try something new. And um, whenever that gets out of whack, and I'm working really hard, I think, to try, and this happens in social media a lot. I, I found, I mean, I didn't know that, I didn't know this world, that you try really hard to be fascinating, and then the work starts to go dead. It starts to go flat. And so for me, I decided that I was going to let that go, and I was going to, you know, put my head down, stay fascinated, rather than trying to be fascinating. And it took a whole lot of pressure off of me. That's, I mean, we have to repeat that because it's so, it's, it's such a great ad advice. You know, you have to keep fascinating yourself and not fascinating people. Exactly, more than trying to be fascinating. Right, because I mean, then I, I, do, I do wholeheartedly believe that, but you know, looking back, I mean, if you really think about it, I don't know really how how you did it, and maybe you can tell us how how you grew your Instagram community from zero to now sixty six thousand people are following you, and they are you know they are really like they really love you and follow you. So well, I think it's because I really love them. I you know, know but I really like, that they, how do you feel do that, that in five you know, years? You know, how, how did you grow people. this? community of, of, of uh, artists and how did you grow your Instagram? Tell us. You know, people ask me that all the time and, and I'm really not withholding information. Um, it, it's been very organic. And, um, but when I have listened over the years to people talk about that are experts in that, um, some of the things that, that came organically, like, you know, it, it's about relationship. People want to know you. And I think that I came into it because I 
I just wanted to share art with other artists because I was used to being a teacher and, and, and talking about art or what have you. So I was just popping on and when artists popped on and started following me and I started following them and, and we were like a club and we were all excited. <laughs> it just kind of went like that. And, um, and I think that you have to, uh, you know, be mindful that, you know, it's not a meat fest all the time. No. And, and it's hard. It's hard because it can, it can get competitive um, because after a while, when it becomes your day job, you know, you need to sell. Uh, but I just keep going back to trying to trust the process and say, okay, you know, I'm just going to continue to do the next fascinating thing. And if people enjoy it, then, um, then that's great. Um, yeah. And I, I do don't think, need, yeah. I don't need people so much to, you know, this is another thing that it, it's just turning everything upside down that, you know, I don't need, and it's nice. I mean, I, and likes are great and stuff, but you can't eat them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. You can get a thousand likes on something and never sell a piece of art. Right. right. Exactly. So I just decided that in making art, you know, because you get, you can get tired too and you can get burned out. And when you have a lot of followers, you know, you get a lot of texts and people want, want a lot of information and uh, you, you can't possibly give it all away. And uh, you just can't personally address it. And so that's another reason why I start to make courses, but I decided that rather than, you know, hoping that people would love me, I decided that um, I listened to a, a really smart guy, Stephen Roach, and uh, talked about things that kill creativity. And, you know, we are so sensitive to people liking our art, you know, and if they love it, that's even better. But uh, then he proposed a question and, and I grabbed it. I grabbed it and ran with it. And I decided, no, this is it. You know, who is my art meant to love? I love and that. That's yeah. what keeps me making art because you can get depressed. I get sick. All, everybody knows that. And it's like, I don't want to do this anymore or, or I'm down in the dumps or something, you know, horrible happened, you know, personally in my life. And, and, and then I, what, what, what I clam up and withhold this gift. Right. But this I mean, is how yeah. I love the community. Right. Right. By because posting. It's, it's real. It's you. You are, you know, you're, you're saying your truth. You have good days, you have bad days, you have in between days, um, and you are a human being like everybody else. And, mm -hmm. um, and you know, the internet is great and Instagram is amazing. And, um, you know, you get to do all these connections, but you also have to check yourself once in a while and say, you know, is this really worth it for me? Am I going too far into the social media? you know, yeah. for your mental health, you also yeah. have to just check in with yourself mm -hmm. and say, you know, am I investing too much in this? And like mm -hmm. you said, like, you still have to fascinate yourself before mm -hmm. you can do anything else. And it's the yeah. same, it same goes with being good with yourself in order to be good with others. And so, yeah. you know, that's something that I, I really have in my mind, I check in every day, and I make sure that I'm, I'm starting my day good. Um, and, and if I don't feel like posting, I won't post. And if I, you know, you just have to balance, right? Everything yeah. is about balancing your life yeah. and, and finding that balance sometimes is challenging, yeah. but you, you, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, everyone tries to find that balance and tries to keep their creativity going, um, without losing themselves for every like. Yes. And also, you know what, uh, Again, there's nothing wrong with just doing it because you want to have fun. I mean, not everybody that gets on social media. Uh, and I, I know that sometimes you have family pressure and stuff. And, and people will say, well, well, what are you doing with your art? You know, I had years that I was just teaching and uh, I had shown in galleries and everything, but I just wasn't doing it anymore. And I, I was constantly saying, so are you still making art? And I was like, yeah. And they go, well, how come you haven't told us about any shows or anything? I said, well, because I'm, I'm not showing. 
and they were going, well, what are you doing with your art? And I said, nothing. I'm just making it. <laughs> it's all right to do that. It's all right to just it's, make it's art really, just for art's really sake. Yeah. And, and, and don't think that you just have to put up a shingle and automatically expect to sell because you're going to get really depressed and, and that's going to be your barometer for whether you're any good. You're yeah. never going to get good like that. And, and when I say good, you know, it, to compare one artist to another is it, kind of ridiculous, you know, because everybody, you know, has their own road. But um, I think it's it, the personal thing about getting good is getting good at communicating that thing you're going after. If you're going after minimalism, then, you know, go for the gusto. You know what I mean? But again, that's that fascination. I got to solve this problem. Right, right. You and know? You, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I get you. I, I totally understand what you're saying. So let me just ask you, because um, we are... I don't want to run out of time. We still have a lot of time left and, and Pat is going to demo and we're going to talk about her crayon, uh, cray crayon uh, project that she challenged that she has right now. But um, were you always into abstract, non-objective work? No, no, no. I was very much, uh, I, I started out, well, my mom took me to a watercolor class, so I learned traditional watercolor young but really didn't do it because I was doing advertising and stuff and then I was doing illustration with the with the advertising and then I when uh when my son got sick and I had to leave my business after 26 years I started to just you know do still lifes and stuff and kind of got the watercolors out and so I was painting representationally and, and taking life drawing classes and things like that at a local art school you know um and um and so it, it just started to morph little by little until people started marching me into the dean and saying, Pat's going to teach the class because our teacher's leaving and we don't want to disband. <laughs> and I was like, I just want to paint. And uh, so uh, that the first job I had was at a, an academic school, extremely academic. And so I started to kind of get more expressive in the work that I did. <clears throat> and I would actually get nasty notes in my teacher's mailbox and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I know. <laughs> I mean, get a life. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. So then I got hired out of there to do that. So that's how Path to Abstraction started because I really didn't know how to paint abstract. I was painting more expressively and I think more than, than demoing, I'm going to show you a little bit about how my crayon thing evolved. And uh, so I would use inventive color and stuff like that. And then, you know, start to distort uh, things that we saw and paint more how you feel about what you see. So that you just didn't have to come up with something, you know, out of the air, you know. Right. And so that's how the whole path to abstraction went. So I learned to paint abstractly and teach it at the same time. And I did that for 12 years. Okay, so will you like treat us with showing you some of your artwork? Sure, sure. What, what I'll show you is um, since we're doing Get Your Cray Cray On and, and the, the, the way that started was uh, because crayons were very symbolic in my life. And uh, so I kind of revert back to them when I kind of need to go into my own little box. And so um, the, the, the first uh, exploration I had with these, um, let me see if I got the right book out here, was that uh, I was still going to Ducray School of Art and uh, you know taking figure classes and stuff. But uh, I was looking at other artists and I got really interested in um, Modigliani. Oh, and he's one of my favorites. He, he's like one of my, I oh, just love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was the thing I got fascinated on. I saw the movie oh. with, uh, I think it was Andy Garcia played Modigliani. Yes, Watch Andy the Garcia. movie, everybody. Yes. Get the movie. Yes. You know, we don't have anything else to do. So, Watch, Watch it. Modigliani yes. and, uh, and all the other artists are in there too because it was at that time. 
so I, I, you know, I, I started out, you know, realistically sketching because my kids would be, we'd be, um, you know, in a library or in Barnes and Noble or whatever. So uh, I had these uh, Caran d'Arche and I had, because uh, I was a watercolorist, so I would embellish a little bit with them. I didn't really use them. And then, um, so I kind of took them with me and got a moleskin because they sell moleskin um, uh, journals at, at Barnes and Noble. So I got one of those and I started like drawing people and I would kind of do them by memory. So I would kind of, because you know, I didn't have time to finish them. So you have I, it? Do you have I it right do. There? So I'm going to show you oh, some of these, some of these kooky, some of these kooky drawings. And, and this is how it all started. Uh, I'll just show you how like, you know, I couldn't do it fast enough because people would move. So when I was out, so, you know, I started, and I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you need to uh, maybe put it, yeah, put it down a little more, maybe? Bring it down. There we go. Much right. better. Now, I'm not going to be able to see this. Okay. But you can, right? Yes. You yes. can see this. Yes. Okay, so I started If you turn out, your like... camera around, you'll be able to see it. What do you mean? So on your well, screen... It's, it's... It's focused down. Okay. All right. So you can, okay, perfect. I can see it perfectly. Okay. As long as everybody else can see it. Yeah. So anyway, you know, so I was starting to try to sketch the person sitting. Just couldn't do it fast enough. So little by little, you know, uh, and then there's another person over here. Um, the first person I wow. grabbed because I was excited was when I went home and my husband would always fall asleep in a chair. Is that and he's crayon? watching television. So this is totally Caran de Arche. Oh my gosh. And that's how I started using them straight out of the thing because I wasn't any place where I could use water. So I started Modigliani-fying everybody. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I started giving them long necks and no eyeballs. And you know what I mean? That was a fascination thing of mine. So I, and, and, and the other thing that I was so into was designing. Like, so I would be always thinking about what else is in the picture and the where's value, the space. The design, the lines, the, the shapes, the shapes, yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything, everything. It was all coming into it. So little by little, I, I just started like in my little world, Modiglianifying oh, everybody. Oh God, what a treasure that you have that. So this was like, you know, my son, and he wanted to be a bad boy, but he really wasn't. And he was like wearing these red bandanas and everything. And I just call this an angel in disguise. So what I year was of, this? Oh, gosh. This was, I don't know, he was about uh, 11 then. Oh. So that was a long time ago. Like 30 years ago, maybe? Mm, 11, uh, 20. 20. Okay. 20. So I was modiglianifying and I was trying to, again, I'm starting to abstract because I'm using blue for shadows and things like that. So I'm also working color theory and, and I don't know it. I'm just doing it. Right. And that's what I'm talking about, being fascinated. Right. And uh, then when I was in my <laughs> classes, this was an architect. And uh, so uh -huh. I would uh, be there or I called him the architect but they would be working and so rather than hovering all the time I would start them and then I would finish them up at home but like I want to say architect and I pick my colors and shapes and sizes for that but this is all Caran de Arche all right wow wow and he here's a student that this is funny she was like one of these students and I could talk about it now because it's so old you know <laughs> um, that uh, she was very smart. She was a realtor, very assertive and stuff. And no matter if I said work big, she'd work small or, you know, whatever. And um, <laughs> is that why she has one eye open and the other she one? She has one <laughs> eye open because she always had her eye on me. Oh, <laughs> I love it, it that. It was very stressful. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was. Oh, my goodness. Oh. So that's how, that's why she looked like that. But again, <laughs> I'd start it there and then I'd kind of paint the essence of people. So I kind of was learning, you know, how to abstract what's real. This was another person. Uh, her husband still collects my art and she had this gorgeous red hair and she always had this piece that just always hung down, just always yeah. hung down. Yeah. Um, and, and I just, uh, I just love that. And I mean, from, from, 
from that to what you paint now is so dramatically different, but yet yeah. it informs it. You know, now I get it more. Where you're well, yeah, from. because you're still talking about yes. shape and size and yes. design and the value so I, I, and yes. I, I'll whisk yes. through this. You know, this was this was a thing of my mom. These were two ladies, and um, and what did I call it? I called it. Oh yeah, so what's for lunch? Because. It kind of was like getting the, <laughs> the idea that maybe they were sharing some good gossip. Right, right. <laughs> I love the blue hair. <laughs> you know, so that was just the way that I would put the shine on their hair. Yeah. So again, I, I was always looking for to put them in an environment. This lady really had hair like this. And oh, she passed God. away. She owned this great shop. So, um, but, but I mean, I... I exaggerated it a little, but she did pass away unexpectedly. So, um, is this in camera? Yes, it's amazing. Okay. Oh my God, I love that hair. I know. So she wore this big Gibson girl hair and, oh and forever, God. you know, and she smoked a lot of cigarettes. And then this one I call uh, having a bad hair day. This is my son in the morning. You know, he's not really a morning person. Right. And he's waiting for his... Uh, I have different ones of him as he gets older. The other one's called Not So Cheerio. So let's but, let's go to one that is more current right now because of time. Oh gosh, wow. So yeah. So anyway, it went on and on and on. Um, and then okay, I'll go really quickly. I'm just going to show you the transition because it's really important. Then I, I moved, and so I didn't really know anybody when I moved. So what became my subject? I started out with people, but then. I started doing landscapes. Okay, wow. They are so, so colorful and so textural. Like totally crayon. To touch the that. Total crayon. Totally wow. crayon. Wow. And I'd simplify it. That's Parkway or, you know, um, there's a path, you know, uh, in the woods. And so I started inventing with color. And so you can kind of see how I started, you know, uh, they are getting gorgeous. away. The color is, is, is really incredible. The, the saturation is incredible. It, it's pretty intense. You know, this was a, a more realistic color, but this was out on Sandy Hook that I would always go. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and this was, uh, oh, there were marshes. There were all kinds of things. I'll try to make wow. this quick because I know you want to get into more of what I'm doing now. Um, yeah, here's a road, you know. And so I would make a lavender road, you know. Yeah. Wow. So it, it, it just it just went on and on and on. Um, but anyway, then I started to do the get your cray crayon stuff that most people are familiar with, and then I started taking that and um, and uh, you know simplifying. I started out really busy and because my art kind of got that way because I could only work small. So that's can you how my show style. us. Can you show us closer? Can you bring that up a little bit? I will. I'm going to go past all of these because all of these ended up leading into then doing more minimal work. Interesting. And so you so, needed to breathe. You needed to find the yeah, space. I needed to just color. Yeah. And just enjoy the process. Yeah, and, and find that, that, like I said, breathing room and the simplicity with the complexity because yes. it is still very complex and it has very, you know, a lot of layers and a lot of like mark making and, and language. Exactly. It's all coming forward, but it's expressing in a different way. Yes, very different. Um, yes. So I started to move into that. And so again, it's just a matter of staying really um, fascinated, you know, and getting into the yes. next thing. Like, yes. you know, some are more successful than others, but it doesn't matter because it's it's for me. Exactly. And so that's why I'm trying to encourage people. I'm not trying to tell them what to do, but just to try and, wow. and to let it go. Oh, and um, those colors so, are just so vibrant, you know. And and I, I myself, I I didn't know that crayon could could do that. <laughs> you, you know, you really got to work it until you find out what something can do. And exactly. that's what we said. You know, five minutes and forty years. 
Yeah, exactly. I love that five minutes and 40 right? minutes. Ooh, and then I wanted, so to, great. Oh, wanted to explore space, you know, so, negative so space. That is, that is exactly what we all strive to do, right? Because your eye goes from, you know, that tiny dot on the top, red, that informs us and has the distance to follow into the language on the bottom. So by having that dense, the density of the black on the bottom, it, it really just talks to each other. And um, that's what we all strive to have, a balance a figurative of um, shapes and forms, but yet having that design that grabs you. And I think that is a very successful piece right there. Thank you. It, but it takes time, you know, it takes time. At one point, I would have looked at a piece like that and said, what, what is that? You know, a five-year-old can do that. <laughs> you know, I'm just like <laughs> most people. You know, this one I posted the other day. Yeah. Um, and so I just kept trying to simplify it and simplify it and, um, and find out, you know, this going across here, less is more. Some of them I like better than others. But to just keep going, I love this one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's the simplicity, but yet the complexity. So it balances it out. It's beautiful. Thanks. So any day, anyway, you know, uh, this one I love also. Yeah, off the page, which is always good to go off the page, right, Pat? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, what is that doing there? You know what I mean? Right. I like to create tension. And then right. maybe just not, not controlling the mark so much. So I really believe, and people have asked me so much, teach us how to mark make, teach us how to mark make. Well, you have to find your mark. And, right. and the way to do it is just to do it. And right. I really find that you can't hide behind anything. If you're just using a crayon, and even if you scribble because it leaves the lines, yes. you're, you're making marks. And you got to yes. color this way and that way and the other way. And it kind of goes on and on and on. So right. that's kind of where I, I was leading to. And then when I came back in to do challenge number two, you know, I started with a, a stuff that's more understandable in terms of abstract. But this is kind of my path uh, in a nutshell. Um, yeah. And, and it came from a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of avenues and a lot of uh, just saying yeah. yes to exploring. And yes. um, so I have yes. a few more pages to go in there and then I'm done. And then, you know, if you would like, um, these are ones where I kind of made the watercolor on the bottom. Um, and I can demonstrate that very quickly so that you don't yeah, have to color so great. hard because some people have a hard time with um, the, the pressure on their hand. There's a lot of people doing this challenge that have, physical disabilities that have arthritis, you know, whose hands cramp up and what have you. So an easy way to deal with that is, uh, or, or not easy, but one way to deal with it is to um, get some water, Pat. So then really you, don't have to, you don't have to uh, press so hard so you have a base to work with. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, that is what I'm saying. So because it's okay. Karanda Arts, you can use that or you can use simple watercolors. Um, I have to get some water. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see that. I think that, you know, um, it's a very different way of creating art with a very um, traditional uh childhood medium so it's right pat well yes yes and it, and it all again i started out as a watercolorist so i had those which were watercolor crayons and then you know i i, I just kept experimenting with with what else could you do with them and, and talk uh, about you know keeping your your child inside of you alive, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this is, this is like I said, this is a medium that we all grew with. And um, it brings us like good thoughts, good, you know, yep. great, great memories. It brings me great memories. Brings me great memories. Can you memories show us too. which ones do you use? Um, well, um, I have 
all of my, I have my woodies that I use. Okay, Love the Stabilo woodies. woodies. Yep. I have the Carande Arche, which I just got a new pack of. All of these are new so I can impress you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at those colors. Because I like broken crayons the best. Oh, Because you wow. can go on your side. But to, to make it dry a little bit easier and take the color, I'm just going to go, this is just a pan thing of Arteza watercolors, all right? You yeah. don't have to get watercolor. Your, your Crayon de Arche will do this. Um, but I'm just going to put like a few, a few colors down. And um, if I can get a decent brush. <laughs> I'm always so well prepared. <laughs> Listen, I'm just thankful you're here and you're doing this for all of us because we're going to learn something new. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thankful I'm here too. So, um, let me see. So, I'm trying to do this upside down. So, <laughs> do it no, however uh, you want. Do, don't do it upside down. Do it, do it how you would normally do it and we'll follow you. Okay. It's just so satisfying to see. So, yeah, so do it. Uh, exactly. Just do it for yourself. And, and um, we, we can we can follow. Okay, so, sure. you know, a little bit about watercolor or watercolor crayons, you know, uh, nobody says you got to use a ton of water with it. Less water, uh -huh. stronger pigment. All right. So if I want stronger pigment, I don't use as much water. All right. So with with watercolor, you don't necessarily have to, to add white, you can add white. You know, as John Singer Sargent added white. Uh, right. and if it's good enough for Sargent and Turner, then it's certainly good enough for me. Yeah, no uh, kidding. <laughs> yeah, hello. You know, like, <laughs> oh, no, you have to leave all your whites. And I did that. I went through all that, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's like, okay. And, and you can't use, um, you can't use um, opaque colors and it's like okay well then Pat, i need you to move your your um your book a little bit to there perfect okay Is that okay great that is perfect yep that's great okay so anyway that's just a few colors and then maybe i'll just put some kind of outlier in there i don't know you can mix on the page to you know of course if i put yellow over that it's going to get kind of green, but it's kind of dirty. But I don't mind the dirt uh, and the mud because I think that muddy stuff enhances pure stuff. So, okay, so you could start out as simple as something like that. I and love just, already, like, you know, the mark making and the colors in there. And you know, it's just as simple as, and, and, and everyone can do this, right, Pat? Like, you just... Everyone can do this. And, and the reason that I don't, I could demo a whole lot. And I think that I am going to do so, everybody, keep your heads up. Because people are starting to make hashtags and they're naming it. And I'm going, okay, well, maybe I should do this. But, you know, <laughs> maybe I will do a, a, a Get Your Cray Crayon Boot Camp um, Zoom yes. class. Yes. So, all right. So... You know, I'm, I am working upside down here. <laughs> You're making your life harder. <laughs> that doesn't matter. What I want to do is I want to get out of the fear zone. You know what I mean? Like if I can work upside down on here and scribble and not worry about the outcome publicly with people working, then I hope to be able to encourage those watching me to do the same thing. You know, um, so you know, in terms of like, how do I make a mark? You know, uh, maybe don't look. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, do it like, blindly. Do did, it did with your left did, hand, did, with your not dominated hand, right? Did somebody teach you how to use a crayon? Yeah, exactly. And, right? and yeah. And like I said, we might have used our left hand or our right hand if we were left handed, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's just going for it without fear. You know, if you're painting for yourself, you have no fear. And that's yeah, how fear, you have to approach every painting, I, I believe. Yeah, it's just paint. I mean, there's a lot of things to be afraid of, but paint, 
I mean, let's give ourselves a break, you know? Yeah, exactly. And the, the fun thing is that you can also blend it. Um, you can blend the Korean de Arche. Yeah, look so, at that. Wow. And kind of stretch it, which is really fun to do. Yeah. And then even if you go over the painted area with white, you know, don't be afraid of the white. That'll blend it. Uh, if I want to take a little bit of black from here and soften the line, I can soften the line. Um, there's just so much you can do. And then I can go in and enhance it with, with you know, if I want to bump up the green, I can go in and bump up that green and see if, how I like it next to that blue. Right. And if I like it, I leave it. If I don't, I can get rid of it because it's wet. I can wet it and get rid of it. So it's really... So you wet um, it right on the paper? Is that how you do it? Well, I wet the paper. I, I did this by I wetting saw the that. paper You started that, bit. but you said if you want to remove it, do you wet it again or how do you... You can wet it again um, and, and it'll lighten it up. Also, you can overpower it. And I'll show you that. that the thing about these Coranda Arch is that, you know, unlike a regular pastel, and regular pastel, you can do, you can do um, um, layers, of course. But say, you know, I, I don't necessarily love something on here. Uh, I could go over it with another color and, and overpower it. Like maybe that green there, I want to change it to magenta. And so I'm going to, overpower it. I'm just going to get in there really hard and change it. And then maybe yeah, I'll just that. leave a do little. You, do you varnish at the end? Do you use matte medium? Yeah, spray varnish. Spray varnish. I don't use okay. matte, matte. I spray varnish these because they're on paper. Okay. So I find that the spray varnish, um, I, I like the Grumbacher spray varnish. But again, um, you know, I'm just looking uh to have yeah, fun and that. it's somewhere along the line you know I'm, I might kind of get an idea of, of of what I'm about but I'm trying to I'm trying different marks and things like that so kind of like that wow crazy good <laughs> you are so great and it's um, just silly I'm gonna turn it's back silly the comments, but you know before I do that Pat can you show us the um, painting that we are selling today um, for the COVID oh, art yeah. project, the tap into your creativity. Um, yes. And you can tell us a little bit about, about it and the price that we're asking and all of that. And 100% of the proceeds will go to Feeding America. So if you want to buy a uh, Pat's original piece, this will be the time to do it. And um, at the same time, you would be helping so many people in need. So um, please uh, consider. I'm going to turn off the comments real quick. Look at that, you guys. It's a 12 by 12, right, Pat? Yeah, if it's on wood, I still have to paint the sides, but I will paint them whatever color the buyer wants. Uh, it's yes. on cradle board. Okay. Awesome. And it has a lot of really fun marks and and uh, scribbles and scrabbles and the, you know, kind of the very essence oh, of what we're we're I am learning so, so right now. So excited about this! If you want to purchase this piece, how much are we asking for, Pat? Well, I think during the show, if if somebody purchases it during the show, which we only have a few minutes, it'll go for two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, whatever the purchase price is, if you want to bid, you know, you can incrementally bid, but. Um, the point of the matter is, whatever the price is that you buy it for, I'm going to add 10% to your offering. Wow. And so the, the, they're going to get 110% on the wow. sale of this piece. Wow. Oh, my okay? God. Thank you so much. That is so generous of you. And um, if you want this piece, uh, please DM me or Pat, and we'll tell you what to do. Um, but this is your time to do something good and get an amazing piece by an incredibly talented Pat. So if you have any <laughs> questions for Pat, this will be the time because we only have a few minutes left. And um, Pat, so how are your um, people responding to this cray crayon uh, challenge? Are they excited about it? Are they- They're really excited about it. 
everybody, everybody has to go to the hashtag, get your cray cray on underscore. Now get your cray cray underscore on 2020 and take a look at what the people are doing. Everybody started out scared. They were writing to me, when are we going to, when are we going to get prompts? When are we going to get this? I did take, uh, ask them and you can go to my link in my, um, on my profile page and there's a get your cray cray on sign up. And what that is, is I'm going to send out maybe once a week, um, some ideas, some pictures of work that other people did just so that we can stay connected. All right. It's not, it's not me telling you what to do or not what to do. Um, I really want you to experiment because that's how with this particular challenge, it runs itself. And if you look at the work, there's like no imitating going on. Oh, I love I that. am so proud of them. Oh. No imitating going on. That is amazing. How, it's is, how is that happening? <laughs> it's just happening because everybody has the freedom to do whatever they want with their crayons, uh, whatever they can or whatever they can't do. They're doing it and they're figuring out, okay, like I, I got to make this look like something or I'm not going to worry about it. Or some people, you know, gave themselves a 10 minute I'm going to go order limit. them. Will you show us that box again? So people yeah. know where to get that. Where do you get it? Where do you order it from? Well, I actually, and I will put it up. Um, you can get it a lot of places, but I actually have it. Um, I have an Amazon influencer link. All right. So okay. I have a list okay. of my favorite supplies on there. Um, if you go there and I have to put the link up, I'm so bad with this kind of stuff. Um, you have to put it up because people want to Yeah, know. because I'll so get a little bit. People and like they and... want to know. I want to go buy it today. So will you put it up today, please? <laughs> yes, I will try. We'll see if it's still active. It should be. But I have that. I have the Stabilos. I have the Lyra pencils up there. And I've had it up there for like two years, but um, I'm really bad at like connecting all the dots. But if you do go there and you buy it through my link, then I would get a little bit of money from that. I think it's like 10% or something. And that would be great because when I do these challenges, just like you're doing this, uh, it's free. You know what I mean? I know. It won't cost you. I know. You're, not, you're going to get a good deal on it and, and, and you're not going to pay any more for it. So exactly. So, you know, Pat, where can we find you? Where can we um, see your work? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, you can mainly? find me on, main, on Instagram. That's my home. And it's at Pat Butinsky Art Talk. And um, I also have um, some online e-courses that are the beginning of path to abstraction and I have three classes that you can buy and they are also in my link. So I have a link tree um, and that if you want to go directly to, to see the courses and the course descriptions, it's www.patbutinskyart.com. And then you'll just go there. Interview as well so and you'll see the classes I... and stuff yes 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 and um i'm really confident um that um regardless of where you are in your journey that it will really help you you know uh simplify and get down to these things that we were looking like the elements of design size shape design space division etc all right. right so i am i'm excited i'm gonna sign up today myself and um pat i can't thank you enough Let's get oh, this welcome. piece that she made for, um, for this incredible project sold today. Um, you can probably, if you haven't uh, taken a picture of it yet, Pat, uh, please upload it into your feed and I will share it as well. And okay. you can DM me or, or Pat and, um, and then we can sell that and give so many meals for people in need. So Pat, thank you for um, trusting me and for being here and for being my new friend. Um, I love your teachings. I love your soul. You're an incredible Thank person. You. Thank you. So I love what you're doing. And real quick, what I wanted to show you was behind me, this is like taking the whole cray crayon thing and, and going big. Okay. Wow. How big know. is that? That's 48 by 48. 
Wow. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Yes. Yes, but we can. What I ended up doing is going in here with oil pastels because I needed a bigger stick. And so it's really, really an expansion on this whole get your cray crayon thing. Wow. Well, congrats. Uh, we got to go, but thank you again, my friend. Okay. And sending you kisses. All right. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.